Hello everyone and thanks for watching. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own DL-44 from The Empire Strikes Back. This is a 3D printed model that I was able to sand and paint and finish. And I'm going to go through all those steps with you here today. Let's get started. So first you want to go to the website Thingiverse, type in ESBDL44. You're going to come up with a few different options. Some of them are parts, some of them are complete blasters, and this is the one that you want to select, the Star Wars DL44 Han Solo. There you go. So you just want to click download. It's a free download so you don't have to pay for anything, but you can leave a tip for the designer. And once you've downloaded the file, you can open up Mesh Mixer, which is a free program that can cut and also orientate your, uh, your objects for printing. And as you can see, it's not straight up, but we've got a little angle to it. So once you've got that figured out, you're going to open up Ultimaker Cura, which is another free software which is used to basically uh, turn the STL files into readable files for your 3D printer. So you open this up. You want to kind of go with your normal settings. Um, make sure that there is build support at at least 70 degrees and have it um, coming from all around, not just touching the build plate. And you want the support to have a really low density, like 0.2%, because it's really hard to break off if it's any more dense than that. And once you're ready, you press slice, wait a few minutes, and it'll give you a preview of the time and the material that it's going to take. If you press the preview button, you can actually get an image of what it looks like with the supports printed. And whenever you're done with that, you can save it to your file or your removable disk, in my case, which is what I use to, uh, I use a tiny SD card. Here's a time lapse of the print. And um, you should probably take your build plate off of your printer before you start yanking stuff off. This is the first time I've ever had anything quite that stuck on there. And, uh, I wouldn't do it again. So I've got a few tools here. Got some pliers, needle nose pliers, some uh, kind of snips for 3D printing and a small flathead screwdriver that I can use to get into different pieces and pry off the supports. You really don't want to do too much prying though because if you're using a uh, screwdriver for leverage you're bound to bend or uh, kind of mess up the, the rest of the print. Here you can see I realized that the uh, actual flash hider was not attached in the print but was just held up with support so do not worry that's going to slide right off and you will glue that on later. There's a lot of detail to this gun uh, I believe the model or the files come from an actual uh, either airsoft gun or, or a model of a, the real gun itself. It has a lot of detail so you're going to want to get out all the supports. 
can. Here is the printed product with all of the supports removed. The scope is held on very delicately, so you do not want to be rough with it. You want to be very gentle when you're taking it apart. And there you can see it's only held on by that one nut, which was all printed in place. And on the back you can see that there's going to be some sanding to be done where the supports were. So the process of sanding begins. I started with the flash hider and um, basically wanted to get rid of any of the 3D printing lines without sanding off any of the detail. You can tell I stayed away from these, uh, these kind of horizontal lines. Next we're going to sand the actual blaster itself, which has a whole lot more detail and crevices. But after a while, get it pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect because we will be using filler primer to fill in a lot of these cracks. You can get this filler primer from Walmart or Home Depot. And always, you know, when you're spray painting, make sure to spray, you know, something else first before you hit your object. You don't want it to have some kind of crazy surprise of paint that you don't want. And I just put on light coats. And once the light coat is dried, I go on with another light coat and it will dry. And it doesn't take five or ten minutes for these paint primer jobs to, to, to dry. And you want to turn it around, rotate it, get all the different spots. So you get it mostly primed. Then you want to go back for another sanding. The first coat of primer is going to have a lot of particles and a lot of debris, and it's going to be—it's uh, not going to be smooth at all. So sanding it down, making it smoother, also uh, sanding down some of those. 3D print lines that have been painted over. And also you want to get a rag and wipe it down before coats. You don't want any dust from your sanding. Here I've got some metallic finish Rust-Oleum, which is going to be the metallic finish of the flash hider, as well as the metal gun or blaster. Here I've got some Bondo glazing spot filler, which will fill in any of these cracks as you can see on the hammer and um, any imperfections that are just too big to to leave this stuff will dry fairly quickly and on a hot day it dries very fast so beware And try not to cake too much of this in the corners because once it's dry, it, you know, kind of gets a little messy. If you have any rubber gloves or latex gloves, that's the best thing to use. Here I just got a Walmart bag. You don't really want to touch this stuff too much. 
Um, just like any chemicals, it's not good to have contact contact with your uh, with your skin. And most of the places that I've had the the spotting uh, spot glaze are all places where the supports from the print were. So that's where the majority of your filling is going to be. An X-Acto is really useful to get into some tiny, tiny spots because even if it's a millimeter of space, um, if you have the settings to print supports everywhere, it's going to print it in between that millimeter. So where there would be a gap, you're left with plastic you're going to have to dig out. With a piece of paper here, I was able to make a uh, little bit of a covering for the rest of the blaster while I paint the scope. And this worked really well because I didn't, uh, I didn't need to tape any part of the blaster. All I had to do was tape this paper shut, and it did a very good job of sealing where I needed it to. Sometimes tape on paint just uh, when you're painting really quick doesn't turn out too good. Here I've got some bronze, which is uh, the only thing I could find for this brass uh, scope, which it looks close enough. You're going to have to pick it up sometimes and uh, turn it around, find the gaps, get into the spots that are hard to get. Now here's a technique where I will paint over top of this dried metallic finish and before it dries try to wipe away some of the finish to reveal a, uh, a weathering technique. And you kind of got to go fast and a little heavy. Uh, if it's too thin, it'll dry too quick and you can't wipe it away. So don't be afraid to, uh, you know, cover it up. But try not to get it too runny. Here I was using a paper towel, and I kind of regret using making that choice uh, because the fibers on the paper towel sometimes come off onto the paint. And later I use a piece of the the brown paper that I'm using to cover up the blaster to wipe away from corners and, and sides, which gave it a much better effect. Also, if you're not comfortable doing this technique, you can dry brush um, over top of a black finish with some bronze or brass and get the same effect. I was trying to go for a more realistic effect where the paint's actually uh, scuffed off. But it, all, it doesn't always work out too great, so you got to practice it a few times and it turns out that the dry brush technique worked great on this later on in the video And now a reveal of the scope.
and it looks pretty good. Here, I regret taping up my scope on the other side, and also I regret painting the uh, the actual grip of the handle silver. The idea of the silver is where there's metal, I can scratch off the paint and there'll be metal underneath. I was not thinking that uh, if I scratched off the handle there would be shiny metal underneath, which is, you know, not very accurate. So next time I think I will just just paint the, uh, the metal, actual, you know, silver and be sure to block off that that grip and paint it uh, either with a, ba a brown base or just a black primer. And I've got a glove on to prepare for this next technique, which is similar to the scope where I go on real heavy with the black matte paint and I'm going to wipe it off in certain areas uh, to weather it just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look, a little more warm. You kind of got to move fast on a bigger spot like this because you do not want it to dry before you get a chance to get get to it and wipe away some of the paint. But here you can see I'm hitting all the spots that more than likely would get scuffed up, but also hitting it in different spots just to give it some character. Here you can see we're starting to get a pretty cool finish. Now it's dry, you can really get an idea of what it's like. And here is a very disappointing reveal when I realized that the adhesive from the tape had basically bonded with the nice black coat that I had finished. But this will be weathered with black acrylic paint, so I'm not too worried about it looking cloudy or uh, not shiny or dull. And I've got some leather brown gloss. Gonna go over the handle here. And I taped off uh, just a, a strip. If you can see the, the uh, detail on the, on the blaster itself, there's a line that goes down the middle and it's the metal uh, frame of the blaster handle and the wood grips are on the side so if you tape that off it will look just that much more realistic. However if you do tape it off be careful not to pull off the coating beneath because that is ultimately what I do with mine. But Little mistakes like that are easy to touch up. 
especially when you're planning on weathering it, making it look old and used. carefully remove tape because it will pull back especially this gloss finish for some reason the gloss really really comes off looks good looks good and then tore it up Being careful not to do the same thing. Going down the back side. And trying to tape the paper to itself and not to the actual finish. And there it is brown and shiny and you can see the scope is a little dull from compared to the rest of the blaster from my tape all right so now we're gonna weather the grip it's got these grooves these lines that are across the grips and uh, black acrylic paint. If you paint that in there and wipe it away, it'll stay in the recesses of the of the grip and give it a dirty, worn kind of appearance. And I found that if you wipe it away too fast, you'll wipe away too much. But if you dab it and kind of let it dry a little bit before you wipe it, you'll get these cool little smudges kind of, of uh, uneven weathering. And looks pretty neat. Here you can see a few smudges there. And of course, we covered all over the gun as well. And now the flash hider. Sometimes you want to add a little bit of water. My uh, acrylic paint is very thin and runny, so I'm just using it straight out of the bottle and wiping it away. And it's easy to wipe away too much. So like I said before, instead of wiping it all while it's completely wet, let it dry and kind of uh, just let it, uh, let it kind of get tacky. And you can use it a paper towel to to dab on it and some of it will stay and some of it will be picked up. Use some reference photos as well if you're trying to get your you know trying to get your weathering as close as possible to the movie. Here you can see I did some dry brush and I'm going to do a little bit more here. And when you don't have the colors in a, uh, a bottle, you can always just spray paint into a, a plate and use it as your paint. Now the paintbrush that you use will 
ultimately be ruined because you cannot wash this out. It's not water-based. But if you've got an old chip brush like this one here, it can be pretty useful. Hitting all the corners. Trying to make it so that it's worn all the way around, but you don't want it to be even. You want it to be asymmetrical. And you also want one side to definitely be worse than the other, because that's probably how it would end up wearing in real life. There you can see the dry brush technique that worked out really good. I'm going to go in and actually paint the bolts or the nut that's in the uh, in the grip bronze as well. E6000 is probably the best thing to use. It's a little bit more like uh, hot glue, but a lot stronger. So it's going to have a little bit of give, a little bit of flexibility. If you're uh, gluing two pieces like this together, you kind of want them to, to, to have a little bit of cushion, a little bit of shock absorption. So instead of having it glued with a very uh, brittle glue, if you drop it, it's much more likely to just kind of break, shatter. This will be a lot less likely to do so, and you're a lot more likely to take this apart than if you glue it together with a epoxy or super glue. And I pushed it on just enough so that the, the tip of the barrel pokes out just a little bit, but not out past the flash guard. And I let it sit. And there you go, the finished DL44. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.